finite automata with epsilon transitions. We shall now introduce another extension of the finite automaton. The new feature is that we allow a transition on epsilon, the empty string. An NFA is allowed to make a transition spontaneously without receiving an input symbol. Like the non-determinism, this new capability does not expand the class of languages that can be accepted by finite automata, but it does give us some added programming convenience. We shall also see when we take up regular expressions how NFA with epsilon transitions which we call epsilon NFS are closely related to regular expressions and useful in proving the, the equivalence between the classes of languages accepted by finite automata and by regular expressions. Let us see about uses of epsilon transitions. We shall begin with an informal treatment of epsilon NFS using transition diagrams with epsilon allowed as a label. In the examples to follow, think of the automaton as accepting those sequences of labels along paths from the start state to an accepting state. However, each epsilon along a path is invisible, that is, it contributes nothing to the string along the path. Let us take one example, an epsilon NFA that accepts decimal numbers consisting of an optional plus or minus sign. First one, an optional plus or minus sign. Second one, a string of digits. Third one, a decimal point. And fourth one, another string of digits. Either this string of digits or this string two can be empty. But at least one of the two strings of digits must be non-empty. Of particular interest is the transition from Q0 to Q1 on any of epsilon, comma, plus, comma, or minus. Therefore, state Q1 represents the situation in which we have seen the sign of if there is one and perhaps some digits but not the decimal point. State Q2 represents the situation where we just seen the decimal point and may or may not have seen prior digits. In Q4, we have definitely seen at least one digit but not the decimal point. So, the interpretation of Q3 is that we have seen a decimal point and at least one digit either before or after the decimal point. We may stay in Q3 reading whatever digits there are and also have the option of guessing the string of digits is complete and going spontaneously to Q5, the accepting state. Next concept is the formal notation for an epsilon NFA. We may represent an epsilon NFA exactly as we do an NFA, with one exception. The transition function must include information about transitions on epsilon. Formally, we represent an epsilon NFA A by A equal to Q comma sigma comma del comma Q naught comma F, where all components have their same interpretation as for an NFA except that del is now a function that takes as arguments first one capital a state in capital q and second one a member of sigma union epsilon that is either an input symbol or the symbol epsilon we require that epsilon the symbol for the empty string cannot be a member of the alphabet sigma so no confusion results let us take one example for formal notation for an epsilon NFA. The epsilon NFA of example 1 diagram is described as capital E equal to Q0, comma Q1, comma up to Q5 and plus, comma minus, comma 0, comma 1 up to 9 del, comma Q0, comma Q5 where del is defined by the transition table. You just observe transition table on the screen what are the inputs are there and using those inputs every state how it is going to do transition in between one state to another state. Next one epsilon closures. We shall proceed to give formal definitions of an extended transition function for epsilon NFS which leads to the definition of acceptance of strings and languages by this automata. And eventually let us explain why epsilon NFS can be simulated by DFS. 
However, we first need to learn a central definition called the epsilon closure of a state. Informally, we epsilon close a state Q by following all transitions out of Q that are labeled epsilon. However, when we get to other states by following epsilon, we follow the epsilon transitions out of those states and so on. Eventually, finding every state that can be reached from Q along any path whose arcs are all labeled epsilon. Formally, we define the epsilon closure E close of Q. Let us take one example. Each state is its own epsilon closure with two exceptions. E close of Q0 equal to Q0, Q1 and E close of Q3 equal to Q3, Q5. The reason is that there are only two epsilon transitions, one that adds Q1 to E close Q0 and the other that adds Q5 to E close Q3. A more complex example is given in the form of diagram. For this collection of states which may be part of some epsilon NFA, we can conclude that E close of 1 equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 and 6. Each of these states can be reached from state 1 along a path exclusively labeled epsilon. For example, state 6 is reached by the path 1, 2, 3, 6. State 7 is not in E close 1. Since even though it is reachable from state 1, the path must use the arc 4 to 5 that is not labeled epsilon. The fact that state 6 is also reached from state 1 along a path 1 to 4 4 to 5, 5 to 6 that has non-epsilon transitions is unimportant. The existence of one path with all labels epsilon is sufficient to show state 6 is in E close 1. We sometimes need to apply the epsilon closure, epsilon closure to a set of states S taking the union of the epsilon closures of the individual states that is E close S equal to union of Q in S epsilon close q the next topic is extended transitions and languages for epsilon nfas the epsilon closure allows us to explain easily what the transitions of an epsilon nfa look like when given a sequence of inputs from there we can define what it means for an epsilon nfa to accept its input suppose that capital e equal to q comma sigma comma del comma q naught and f is an epsilon NFA. We first define del cap, the extended transition function to reflect what happens on the sequence of inputs. The intent is that del cap of q comma w is the set of states that can be reached along a path whose labels. When concatenated form the string w. As always epsilons along this path do not contribute to w. The appropriate recursive definition of sigma cap is del cap is let us take first one basis del cap of q comma epsilon equal to e close of q that is if the label of the path is epsilon then we can follow only epsilon label arcs extending from state q that is exactly what e close does let us see induction suppose w is of the form xa where a is the last symbol of W. Note that A is a member of sigma. It cannot be epsilon which is not in sigma. We compute delta cap of Q comma W as follows. First one, let P1 comma P2 up to PK be delta cap of Q comma X that is the PIs. The PIs are all and only the states that we can reach from Q following a path labeled X. This path may end with one or more transition labeled epsilon and may have other transitions as well. Second one, let union of i equal to 1 up to k del of pi comma a be the set r1, r2 up to rm that is follow all transitions labeled a from states we can reach from q along path labeled x. The rj's are some of the states we can reach from q along path labeled w. The additional states we can reach are found from the RJs by following epsilon label arcs in step 3 that is uh, epsilon cap of Q comma W equal to E close of R1 comma R2 comma up to RM. This additional closure step includes all the paths from Q label W 
by considering the possibility that there are additional epsilon level arcs that we can follow after making a transition on the final real symbol A. Next topic is eliminating epsilon transitions. Given any epsilon NFA capital E, we can find a DFA D that accept the same language as capital E. The construction we use is very close to the subset construction as the states of D are subsets of the states of capital E. The only difference is that we must incorporate epsilon transitions of capital E which we do through the mechanism of the epsilon closure. Let capital E equal to capital Q E comma sigma comma del capital E comma Q naught comma F capital E then the equivalent DFA D equal to capital Q D comma sigma comma del capital D comma Q D comma F T which are defined as follows first one Q D is the set of subsets of capital Q E more precisely we shall find that all accessible states of D are epsilon closed subsets of capital Q E that is states F subset R equal to capital Q E such that S equal to E close of S put another way the epsilon closed sets of states S are those such that any epsilon transition out of one of the states in S leads to a state that is in also in S note that phi is an epsilon closed state second one qd equal to e close of q naught that is we get the start state of d by closing the set consisting of only the start state of e note that this rule differs from the original subset construction where the start state of the constructed automaton was just the set containing the start state of the given NFA. Third one, capital FD is those sets of states that contain at least one accepting state of capital E that is capital FD equal to S such that S is in capital QD and S intersection capital FE not equal to phi. And last one, delta D. Delta D of capital S comma A is computed for all A in sigma and sets S in capital QD by let S equal to P1 comma P2 comma up to PK then compute union of I equal to 1 up to K del capital E of PI comma A let this set be R1 R2 RM then delta D of S comma A equal to E close of R1 comma R2 comma up to RM. Let us take one example to eliminate epsilon transitions. Eliminate epsilon transitions from the epsilon NFA of the diagram shown on the screen which we shall call capital E in what follows. From capital E we construct an DFA D which, which is shown in the diagram that is on the screen. You should imagine that for each state uh, there are additional transitions from any state to phi on any input symbol for which a transition is not indicated also the state phi has transitions to itself on all input symbols. Since the start state of capital E is Q0, the start state of D is E close of Q0 which is Q0 comma Q1. Our first job is to find the successor of Q0 and Q1 on the various symbols in sigma. Note that these symbols are the plus and minus signs the dot the dot and the digits 0 through 9 on plus and minus q0 goes nowhere while q0 goes to q1 thus to compute delta d of q0 comma q1 comma plus we start with q1 and epsilon close it since there are no epsilon transitions out of q1 we have delta d of q0 comma q1 comma plus equal to Q1 similarly Q1 delta D of Q0 comma Q1 comma plus equal to Q1 similarly delta D of Q0 comma Q1 comma minus equal to Q1 these two transitions are shown by one arc in the figure next we need to compute delta D of Q0 comma Q1 since Q0 goes nowhere on the dot and Q1 goes to Q2 
that is shown in the figure we must epsilon close of q2 as there are no epsilon transitions out of q2 this state is its own closure so delta d of q0 comma q1 equal to q2 finally we must compute delta d of q0 comma q1 comma 0 as an example of the transitions from q0 comma q1 on all the on all the digits we find that q0 goes nowhere on the digits but q1 goes to both q1 and q4 since neither of those states have epsilon transitions out we conclude delta d of q0 comma q1 comma 0 equal to q1 comma q4 and likewise for the other digits we have now explained the arcs out of q0 comma q1 in the figure that is shown on the diagram that is shown on the screen the other transitions are computed similarly and we leave them for you to check since q5 is the only accepting state of capital e the accepting states of d are those accessible states that contain q5 we see these two sets q3 q5 and q2 q3 q5 indicated by double circle in the diagram